in at number 10, we have got the Galley, and I'm sorry to all Syntac lovers out there, or just Galley lovers out there, or maybe Syntac himself if he's even watching this video, because the Galley is a staple creature for him, but for me, I really just don't like this as a creature. It doesn't really have much use to me, and it is so irritating and annoying to tame. Not necessarily just because it is a difficult tame, it's not actually a hugely difficult tame, apart from the fact that they die so often when taming one. You'll need Trank Darts instead of Trank Arrows. If you use Trank Arrows, you're just going to kill one of these things. What do you have one? Their weight isn't actually that great, so you're probably not actually going to be able to get loads of resources across the map at the speed uh, that a Gallimimus can just go at at default, because this is their default speed. Yes, albeit pretty quick, but still, considering their health and their feebleness in everything else, they really just aren't a good creature and they're not worth the tame whatsoever and their saddle was actually kind of expensive for what they do as well although that doesn't make a bad creature it's just another deficit again which again makes these creatures just even less enticing to use for me you can always just use like the procoptodon which was just there that is a much better creature which is just so much more ro robust in all of its features and the galley just doesn't have that and it, it's kind of a shame because there's a kind of there's an essence of community with this creature with obviously youtubers like syntax but most people kind of know you don't really tame the galley you kind of avoid this creature and it's a little bit of the meme and i was actually going to put the dodo here instead but I can't do that to the dodo, can I? And also the dodo is really useful for simple kibble, so it definitely isn't deserving on the list. Unlike the AI list, which put the dodo right in the number one spot. Definitely would not do that. Next up, we have got the Paki, and this creature kind of had to be here when you think of it. Like, this creature is so unnecessarily long to tame with its its actual tame. It's not a very difficult tame. It's not like the process is complicated. It just takes ages to tame these things and they're not even particularly useful. They can't even gather berries and they kind of one use could be dealing torpor, but it's in such a controlled little area and also it'll do more damage than actual torpor. They still don't deal a lot of damage. Anyway, it's just not worth using these creatures for that use and they're just really slow and not particularly useful for absolutely anything if they're a berry gatherer then maybe it would improve a lot and possibly i'm being pretty dumb but i have never been able to gather berries with these things and i'm pretty sure you can't if you could then tell me down below and my opinion might change these things slightly but still i really don't think they're good tames it's just a waste of a position get yourself a parasol they can gather berries and they are so much of a better creature in the early game like yeah, it could kill a raptor, but it took like over a minute for it to do this. Obviously, I had to to edit the video so it, it would actually fit in the B-roll, but it's just really not a good creature. Don't tame one. Next up, we have got the Archaeopteryx, and I'm just putting this thing here partly because its taming food is unnecessary. It uses chitin. Really? Why? Also, these things spawn in the redwoods, not the friendliest biome to tame in. And since the glide suit came out, they really aren't useful, so I have to put them in the worst art creatures list, as there is absolutely no use for these creatures anymore whatsoever. You just, this creature is useless. You, like, to carry this thing around, it's just a slog, and you can't really get much use out of it. Just get a normal flyer. It's actually easier to get a Tyrannosaur on than one of these things, as the biome when you tame one of these things isn't particularly friendly, and a Tyrannodon is going to be so much better than this creature or even like any just flyer or glider it's gonna like wipe this thing out of the park there is no use for this creature to be in arc but also the cinema crops exist so this doesn't need to be here at number seven we have got the microraptor and again we kind of have a useless creature this thing can't really do anything in particular at all and obviously maybe yeah you could use it to knock players off a mount there are just better creatures like the desmodus can pick players off a mount and it still is quite a finicky use case and it doesn't work very well or effectively there really is not a huge use for these creatures to be used in that scenario so they're just pretty obsolete and again not the friendliest to tame because they often come in packs and they're just an absolute pain to deal with kind of like polovias although polovias do have a slight use so obviously i'm not putting the general polovia on this list they they don't need to be in here next up we have got the oviraptor some people might say this is an unpopular opinion to put here and surely the archaeopteryx and the microraptor are less useful than this thing as it kind of increases the rate that 
eggs will be laid by creatures but it really it isn't an essential thing to me at least and maybe to people that do want loads of them it's i don't i have a feeling it's not going to make the biggest difference maybe the oviraptor is an insane creature to you but the tail method is pretty unnecessary and i really don't like these things as a creature and i think their use case is kind of pretty useless, like the Dimetrodon and uh, incubating eggs, just use air conditioners. I know there isn't any an alternative for this creature, I just I just think it's really useless. Next up, we have got the Uranio, and this creature is so useless. Like, its tame method is a really annoying passive tame, and on top of that as well, it just really doesn't have much use of a creature. I'm going to put the Titanoboa here as well, as it kind of follows under a similar league. Obviously not the same tail method as Titan of Buzz's tail method is arguably even worse and that creature is arguably even less useful especially considering the new kibble system whereas before it did actually have a use and nowadays it doesn't. Just these two creatures they really they don't they can't do anything that are necessary tames and there's no use to these things being in the art game at all. Maybe if the Aranio could climb walls and the um, Titan of Buzz was still useful for kibble they wouldn't be here on this list but they're useless, so they are. Next up, we have got the Pego, and I'm going to kind of put the... Well, actually, I'm not. People might say, well, why wouldn't I put the Ichthyornis here? Well, the Ichthyornis actually kind of has a use. It can gather back black pearls and all of that stuff. So, no, it does not deserve to be on the worst art creatures list. And I've been throwing the word useless around, but this is still the worst art creatures list, not the most useless, but they kind of... They are in some ways uh, big synonyms of each other but the pego kind of does have one use which is it can actually gather berries berries what am i am i am i turning to a northerner now it can gather berries for you which is actually quite a nice feature for a creature like this to have although you're taming these things on accident no one's actually going out to tame one of these things the way you tame one you just put berries in the last like your hotbar and then it will steal them and then it will tame so you can tell how that would happen on accident and all of my pego tames have been on accident and they're really just not useful they don't do anything they just sit on your shoulder and do nothing and there's nothing that you can really do with them again kind of falling into the worst arc creatures list it just doesn't it just it doesn't do anything it can't do anything and it, it doesn't really need to do anything because it's not really a big part of the art game it's just a huge annoyance of a creature and once tamed you really just can't get anything out of it whatsoever at number three we have got the female megaloceros the male one is actually a pretty good thatch gatherer but the female one cannot attack whatsoever so it has to be on the list it is essentially just used to breed megaloceruses so then you could get a better male megaloceros for better 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 thatch gathering don't know why my words are not working today but yeah this creature is useless apart from that one thing which is why it's here it is such a bad art creature you can't do anything with it whatsoever it just you can ride it and you can jump around with it and you can move around the map with it it can't attack though like the Diplo, but at least the Diplo has knockback and the Diplo is a good berry gatherer. That gives it some merit. This the, this thing just can't, it just can't do anything. It feels like whenever you press the attack button or something, if you're, you're looking to that, it just feels like this creature hasn't been coded properly. Like there's something wrong with it, but no, there is nothing wrong with it. And if you ever tame one of these things, I don't know why you would, unless obviously you're breeding and you don't know they didn't attack, well, now you do because these things don't attack. So don't tame it unless you're doing breeding really just one of the worst art creatures why don't you at least give these things an attack and at number two we have got the compsognathus or just the compi it's called the compi in art don't know why i decided to do the whole long fancy name but hey ho and this creature can only be tamed with prime meat it's torpor goes down ridiculously fast and once tamed maybe you could send it to attack something slightly really just doesn't have a use and i'm kind of going to put the listro right here as an honorable mention as well because it follows a similar suit again kind of has a use like the Overraptor, where it will buff something from your creatures that will buff the xp just again for me really just not a useful creature you you can't get anything out of these things and number one is anything you really tame with the fish traps as you do tame that creature if you let them out of the fish trap and i know maybe you might say that's a little bit of a cheat and it doesn't count but you have tamed it so it yeah it's there so see the count save tooth salmons trilobites all of those things the, the worst dark tame just by far like honestly 
you can't use these things for anything. They're just there. Obviously, you can use them when in a fish basket to tame a shadow main. That's kind of nice. But you can't when they're out in this form, so that's why they're in it at the number one spot. In at number 10 is the Moser. It is a powerful aquatic mount. The Mosasaurus is a massive, powerful aquatic dinosaur that serves as an exceptional underwater mount. It has high health, stamina, and damage output, making it a formidable force in underwater combat. Underwater exploration, with its ability to navigate underwater depths, the Mosasaurus allows players to explore the ocean depths safely. It can travel quickly and cover vast distances underwater, which is particularly useful for reaching underwater caves and high resource rich areas. And for combat superiority, the Mosasaurus high base damage and health make it a dominant force against other aquatic creatures, including other formidable predators like the Plesiosaur or the Lysicthes. This makes it a valuable asset for defending underwater bases or engaging in underwater battles. Right, next up we have the Uteranus, and the main good thing about this is its leadership roar. The Uteranus has a special ability called the Courage Roar or Fear Roar. When it roars, it gives a buff to nearby allied creatures, boosting their attack power and resistance to fear effects. This can be incredibly useful in battles or when taming other creatures, making them stronger and more resilient. Then they also have utility in battles, due to which Courage Roar ability, the Uteranus becomes a valuable valuable asset in battles against other creatures or players. The buff it provides to nearby creatures can turn the tide in challenging encounters, making it a significant asset in PvP, player versus player, or PvE, player versus environment scenarios. It also plays a role in taming assistance. When taming other creatures, especially those that are difficult or have torpor inducing effects, the Uteranus can help by buffing the taming creature's damage output and resistance, making the taming process safer and faster. While the Uteranus can't fly, it can be ridden and controlled, its decent speed and ability to provide buffs while being riding make it a versatile and valuable mount for various situations. And it also has pack buffs when used in conjunction with other creatures, the Uteranus's buffs can stack onto other pack leader creatures and provide new bonuses give to the allied creatures creating a formidable force. Next up we have the RG. Firstly, to do with transportation, the RG has a decent flight speed and stamina, making it a reliable creature for transportation. It can carry out a considerable amount of weight, allowing players to transport resources, creatures, or even other smaller dinosaurs across long distances. Combat Utility While not the most powerful combat creature, the RG is quite effective in battles due to its decent health pool, stamina, and melee damage. Its ability to fly allows it to attack from the air, making it useful for hunting, defending, or even assisting in taming other creatures. Resource gathering. Argentavis can be trained to harvest various resources efficiently. They're particularly good at gathering renewable resources such as hide, meat, and organic polymer from certain creatures. With their ability to carry large amounts, they can expedite resource gathering trips. Its ability to carry other creatures in its talents makes it useful for taming or relocating smaller creatures. This feature is especially handy when players want to tame creatures in challenging or dangerous areas and then transport them to a safer location for taming. Accessibility. The RG is relatively easier to obtain compared to some of the other flying creatures in the game. They're commonly found in various regions that can be tamed using a variety of foods, making them accessible for players at different levels and base defense and utility. Due to their decent combat capabilities, Argentavis can be trained and used to defend a base or assist in resource gathering around the player's settlements, providing them an extra level of security. In at number 7 is the Theri, and the first thing we can say is its gathering efficiency. One of the primary reasons for the Therizinosaur's popularity is its outstanding gathering capabilities. It excels at gathering a wide variety of resources such as wood, thatch, fibre, berries, and rare flowers efficiently. This makes it a valuable asset for resource gathering, especially for wood and thatch, which are essential building materials. Combat prowess. The Therizinosaur is a formidable combatant with high base damage and a rapid attack rate. When properly leveled and equipped, it can be effective in both defensive and offensive roles. Its ability to gather resources also makes it easier to collect the materials needed for saddles and gear, enhancing its combat capabilities further. To do a decent health and versatility, Therizinosaurs have a good base health pool, making them durable in battles, and additionally, they can be bred for higher stats, making them even more resilient. Their versatility in both gathering and combat makes them a desirable choice for many players. Herbivore and berry gathering, with its ability to efficiently gather berries, the Therizinosaur becomes valuable for players needing large quantities of berries for taming herbivores, creatures, or crafting consumables. Kibble production. 
They have the ability to collect large amounts of eggs from various creatures, making them ideal for egg farming and kibble production. Kibble is an important resource for efficiently taming higher tier creatures. In at number 6 we have the Spino. It is a powerful all-rounder. The Spinosaurus is a well-rounded creature with a high base damage, health and speed. Its versatile stats make it effective in various situations including combat, resource gathering and exploration. It is an excellent swimmer. Spinos are able to move swiftly through waterways and traverse both shallow and deeper waters without issue. This amphibious nature allows them to excel in aquatic environments and explore underwater areas. The gathering capability makes them a proficient gatherer, especially for specific resources like meat and hide. Their attacks yield substantial amounts of meat and hide from any creatures that they defeat, making them a valuable for collecting these resources efficiently. They also have combat superiority. Again, spawners are powerful combatants with a unique attack animation that covers a wide area, allowing them to deal damage to multiple enemies at once. Their high base health makes them formidable opponents in battles against both land and aquatic creatures. Also, they have accessibility and a taming ease. A Spino can be found in various regions across the Ark map, making them very relatively accessible to any kind of Ark player. While they might require some effort to tame during their strength, they can be tamed using meat, fish, and become valuable assets once tamed. Despite their large size, Spinos move relatively quickly, both in land and in water. This agility allows players to maneuver effectively during combat or exploration, making them useful for traveling across different terrains. And Spinos are often used in boss fights due to their high damage output and durability. Their versatility makes them suitable for various boss encounters, adding to their value in high end game content. Overall, the Spinosaurus' combination of high stats, versatility, speed, combat prowess, and resource gathering abilities make it highly sought after and value and a valuable creature in Ark Survival Evolved for both solo players and tribes. In at number 5, we have the Megalodon, and the main thing they have is the Megalodons are relatively fast underwater and have good stamina. They allow players to explore the ocean depths and travel across water bodies efficiently. They can serve as reliable mounts for underwater exploration due to their speed and maneuverability. Ability. Also, in the early to mid stages of the game, before obtaining higher tier aquatic mounts like the Moza or the Plesio, the Megalodon can be a valuable aquatic mount due to its moderate strength, ease of taming, and availability in various parts of the map. However, compared to some of the larger aquatic creatures like the Mosasaurus or the Plesiosaur, the Megalodon might lack in raw power and durability that the higher tier creatures possess. As players gain progress in the game, they might not opt for a less potent creature like the Megalodon. So why AI did you put this thing in at number five and the Moza in at number 10? You really don't make sense. Well, ultimately, the Megalodon might not be as powerful as some other aquatic creatures, but its speed, accessibility, and early game utility make it like the best the, the, it says the, the best ocean tame. Next up, we have the Golem or the Rock Elemental. And the main thing they have is durability and tankiness. Rock Elementals can possess an incredibly high base health pool and natural armor, being the one of the most resilient creatures in the game. They can absorb a significant amount of damage from both creatures and structures, serving as formidable tanks in battles or as defenders for bases. They also are potent attackers capable of dealing substantial damage to both creatures and structures. Their rock throwing ability allows them to attack enemies from a distance, making them an effective siege creature in raiding scenarios. They also have the ability to gather large quantities of stone and similar resources by smacking rocks with their attacks. This makes them invaluable for resource gathering, especially for stone, flint, and metal, which are essential for crafting and building. Placing a rock elemental within a base can act as significant deterrent for a pen a potential potential attackers. Their immense health pool and damage output make them powerful defenders against raiders or hostile creatures. In PvP scenarios, golems are highly sought after for their ability to deal significant damage to enemy structures. The rock throwing attack allows them to damage structures from a distance, making them effective siege creatures in raids. However, its movement speed is a bit of a downside. In at number three, we have the Quetz. It is an aerial platform. The Quetzal serves as a flying platform capable of carrying massive amounts of weight in its platform saddle, which allows players to build structures on its back, essentially turning it into a mobile base. This feature is invaluable for base building, resource transportation, and mobile operations. It also is very versatile. The Quetzal's combination of flying ability, high weight capacity, and the platform style makes it one of the most versatile creatures in the game. It can be utilized for various tasks, including base building, resource gathering, taming, combat, and transportation. 
Due to this exceptional versatility and usefulness across multiple aspects of gameplay, the Quetzal is a highly prized and sought after art creature by many, many players and tribes in the Ark Survival Evolved game. And its unique abilities serve as a mobile platform, carry other creatures, transport heavy loads and engage in combat, make it an indispensable asset in the game. What a lovely thing to say about a creature this slow. In at number two, we have the Giga. The Giganotosaurus boasts incredibly high base damage and health stats, making it one of the strongest land creatures in the game. Its damage output surpasses most other creatures, allowing it to decimate opponents quickly. Gigas are highly sought after in PvP scenarios due to their devastating combat abilities. They can deal massive damage to structures and creatures, making them an exceptional siege creature during raids or base defenses. Gigas are massive creatures, instilling fear in both players and AI controlled creatures. Their large size and aggressive nature makes them formidable adversaries in battles and excellent deterrents for potential attackers. Also, despite their immense strength, to strength, strength, I should have said. Gigas are also efficient gatherers, particularly for meat and hide. Their attacks yield substantial amounts of resources from the creatures they defeat, making them very useful for harvesting. Gigas are often considered end game creatures due to their power level, and they can play a significant role in late game activities, including raiding, boss battles, and establishing dominance on the server. Overall, the Giganosaurus' unparalleled strength, combat prowess, intimidation factor, and significance in the end game content make it highly sought after and a feared creature in Ark Survival Evolved, often playing a crucial role in dominating the game's landscape. And in at number one is the Rex. Rexes possess high base health and damage stats, making them formidable fighters. They are strong attackers and can deal significant damage to both creatures and structures, making them excellent combat mounts. Due to their strength and health, Rexes are on often used in various combat scenarios, including hunting, other creatures, defending bases, engaging in boss fights, or raiding enemy bases. Their high damage output makes them valuable assets in confrontations. Rexes are relatively easier to tame compared to some of the higher other creatures, like the Giga, for example. They serve as an effective combat mount themselves and can also be used to assist in taming other creatures due to their strength and damage output. Rexes are commonly used in boss fights due to their high damage output, durability, and effectiveness against bosses in caves or arenas. They are often a crucial part of strategies for taking down challenging boss creatures in Ark. Rexes can be found in various regions across the Ark map, making them relatively accessible for taming. Players can encounter them in many different biomes, and the relatively straightforward taming process makes them available for players at different stages of the the game. When multiple Rexes are present, they gain a pack bonus that increases their damage output, making them even more lethal in battles. This pack boost can significantly enhance effectiveness in group combat scenarios. In both PvP and PvE situations, Rexes are highly valued for their combat capabilities. They can be used for base defense, raiding, battling other players or tribes, and dominating the game's environment. While not specialized gatherers, the Rexes can collect decent amount of hide, meat, and keratin from creatures they defeat, making them useful for resource gathering. Overall, the Rexes' combination of high health, damage uh, output, accessibility, ease of taming, versatility in various gameplay scenarios, makes it one of the sought-after arc creatures. Not really sure about that pack buff, though. Well, that was a video and a half, wasn't it? Not really sure about the pack buff on a Rex. AI definitely got that wrong there. And the Moser and Megalodon, bit of a weird match. But either way, did AI choose right? And what is your favourite arc tame? And I will see you all later.